Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeremy Brownridge. I'm private secretary to the Lieutenant Governor and Assistant Deputy Minister here at Government House. On behalf of all the staff, we warmly welcome you to Government House and the 2024 Order of British Columbia Investiture Ceremony. Before we begin, please do as I do and silence your phone. Uh, you have received calls up here. We don't want to do that. Uh, so we do not disturb the proceedings. And now that I have your attention, if I could kindly ask you to please rise, if you're comfortable doing so, for the entrance of the Honourable Janet Austin, Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, the Honourable Mike Farnworth, Deputy Premier of British Columbia, and the official party, including today's recipients. And we'd ask that you remain standing for the National Anthem.
Again, please join me in thanking Stephanie Greaves on vocals today, Darcy Phillips on the piano, and Joey Smith on the bass. Please be seated. Your Honor, Deputy Premier, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to welcome all the recipients of the Order of British Columbia, guests and members of the OBC Advisory Council to this investiture ceremony. I'd also like to acknowledge those uh, watching online, friends, past recipients, nominators, and other distinguished guests. And I'm now honored to call on Elder Butch Dick of Songhees Nation to provide the blessing this afternoon. I, Clachale, CMCA, uh, thank you so much for the honor of being here. Your honor, minister. You can just about tell the time of the year when this ceremony takes place. But each time, it's so important to recognize outstanding people in our community. It's a vital part of where we live. I've been called many times to provide words of encouragement, not only to the recipients, but to all people. It's a beautiful day in the land we used to call Metulia. The sun shining, you can feel the sea breeze, you realize the season cycle is turning. In our world, as a big circle is turning, as sacred circles do. In a sacred circle, there are four colors, black, white, red, yellow, which shows diversity in how we should respect and understand the diversity in this world that's always turning. We also like to rec recognize the grandmother moon and the grandfather sun who are looking after us 24-7. And when we say encouraging words or words of praise, we all say that in a different way because we all say words to a higher power. And that also needs our respect and understanding in this world today. So it's always an honor to be able to be here. And I want to offer my congratulations to all the recipients and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Dick, for that wonderful blessing. And it's, it's now my extreme pleasure and honor to call on Chief Jerome Thomas, Chief Counselor of Esquimalt Nation, to provide a welcome to the territory. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to start off by thanking Her Honorable for the invitation here to do this the traditional way on welcoming every one of you to our territories from the furthest away to the closest and <clears throat> welcome everybody to our traditional territories. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Chief. Uh, I'm now delighted to turn the proceedings over to the Director of Ceremonies this afternoon, our friend and colleague, uh, Silas, uh, the Deputy Minister of Intergovernmental Relations Secretariat. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jeremy, and uh, welcome everyone. Great to see you, thanks for, for being here. Uh, we gather here today to celebrate the remarkable achievements of these deserving recipients and the contributions they've made to our province. Your recognition as an Order of BC recipient is a testament to your dedication and outstanding work, which has enriched our province and extended its positive impact far beyond our borders. The Order of BC represents the highest form of recognition that our province can bestow upon you. Over the 35 years since the inception of the Order of BC, 515 exceptional people have been recognized with this honor. Many more are worthy of this honor than can be chosen each year. And I would like to express our sincere gratitude to the members of the Advisory Council for their diligent and thoughtful deliberations in making these recommendations. I am honored myself to sit on the Advisory Council and will ask the other members who are here today to stand as I say your name. The Honourable Len Marchand, Chief Justice of BC and Chair of the Council. The Honourable Raj Chohan, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. Dr. Trish Kelly, President and Vice Chancellor, Emily Carr, University of Art and Design. And Patricia Warwick, who was appointed to the Order last year. Her Honour, the Lieutenant Governor, is pleased to be the Chancellor of the Order. Please join me in thanking these individuals for the work on the Advisory Council. Before proceeding to the ceremony, I want to acknowledge the absence of one of the recipients listed in the program. Unfortunately, Howard Grant is unable to join us this year due to illness. He sends his regrets and will be invited to attend an investiture at a later date. Likewise, Brenda Crabtree, who was also appointed this year, was unable to attend and will be invited to next year's event. Okay, I will now move on to the ceremony and the reading of the letters patent. Her Honour has instructed me to present to her these persons for investiture with the Order of BC and to read the letters patent conferring the Order upon them. Recipients, please stand as I call your name if you are able, and guests, please hold your applause until all the recipients have been announced. Charles III, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, Canada and his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to John Anderson. Karima S. Sabar, Lily Lee, Don Matrick, William McCarthy, Colin James Mann, Imat Raminch, Ilana Rosenfeld, Gary Siegel, and Kathy Catherine Ulrich. Know ye that in recognition of serving with the greatest distinction and excellence in a field of endeavor benefiting the people of the province of British Columbia or elsewhere, on the nomination of our advisory council to the Order of British Columbia, and with the approval and on the recommendation of the Executive Council, we do by these presents invest you with the Order of British Columbia, and we do hereby admit you to the membership of the said order, together with all and singular the rights, privileges, and advantages to the order pertaining or which of right ought to appertain to the same. In testimony whereof we have caused these our letters to be made patent and the great seal of our province to be here unto affixed. Witness the Honorable Janet Austin, Lieutenant Governor of our province of British Columbia, in our city of Victoria, in our province, in the second year of our reign, by command. Recipients, congratulations. Thank you. You may be seated. And I'll now ask Jeremy to come back up to the podium to read the citations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Silas. Uh, as Her Honour's Private Secretary, I of course have the privilege of introducing each recipient. 
and I'll read their citations. Uh, congratulations to you all. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome John Anderson of West Vancouver to the stage to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia. John Anderson's journey from warehouse worker to CEO of global produce leader OPI is a testament to his dedication to sustainability and community support. Influenced by his upbringing in Latskwiti Island, John transformed OPI into a global powerhouse in fresh produce, employing thousands and farming millions of hectares worldwide. Under his leadership, 90% of OPI's packaging is now recyclable or biodegradable and water consumption has been reduced by 30%, significantly lowering greenhouse gas emissions. Beyond environmental initiatives, John is a committed philanthropist, donating millions to causes such as food security, health care, and community programs. His passion for aviation extends to life-saving missions with BC Transplant. John's unwavering commitment to sustainability, fair wages, and community welfare has earned him a global recognition and continues to inspire positive change here in British Columbia and well beyond. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, John Anderson. I'm now very pleased to welcome Karima S. Sabar of West Vancouver to receive the insignia of the Order of British Columbia. Karima has been a driving force in BC's healthcare and life sciences sectors, advancing commercial healthcare from research to real world impact. Starting her career in major pharmaceutical companies, she revitalized BC Biotech into Life Sciences BC, fostering collaboration across government and stakeholders. As CEO of the Center for Drug Research and Development, she secured over $180 million, leading to the creation of six innovative companies. Since 2016, as CEO of Quark Venture, she's led a $500 million US dollar global health sciences fund, supporting 24 pioneering healthcare companies worldwide. Karima also played a key role in guiding Canada's COVID-19 response strategies, her leadership and mentorship have raised over $1.5 billion for impactful enterprises. Her accolades, including Canada's Most Powerful Women Top 100 Award, highlight her profound impact on healthcare, venture capital, and biotech here in BC. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Karima S. Sabar. Next, to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia, I'm delighted to call upon Lily Lee of West Vancouver. Lily Lee's dedication to the downtown east side spans decades, beginning with her work as a public health nurse, where she provided care and administered vaccinations to the community. Inspired by her father, an early Chinese immigrant, Lily pursued a nursing degree at UBC and has devoted her life to helping those in need. Her philanthropic impact alongside her late husband, Robert H. Lee, is evident in numerous Vancouver landmarks, including the Lily Lee Community Health Center, Hastings, the Robert and Lily Lee Family Community Health Center, and the Robert H. Lee YMCA. She also established the Lily Lee Scholarship in Nursing at UBC. Lily's unwavering commitment to education, health care, and housing continues to uplift her community, leaving a lasting legacy of service and compassion. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Lily Lee.
Next, to receive the... Oh. <laughs> to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia, I now call upon Don Matrick of Victoria. Don Matrick's journey in tech began in 1982 when at just 17 years old, he developed video games in his Burnaby basement, co-founding Distinctive Software. This venture laid the foundation for BC's tech industry, ultimately becoming a leading global game studio after its acquisition by Electronic Arts. At EA, Don played a pivotal role in creating blockbuster franchises like NHL, FIFA, The Sims, and Need for Speed rising to president of Worldwide Studios. In 2007, Don joined Microsoft, where he led the Xbox division to unprecedented successes, launching innovations like Kinect. Later, as CEO of Zynga, he stabilized the social gaming giant. Don's leadership has attracted billions in investments to BC, creating thousands of jobs and establishing the province as a global tech hub. Now, through MDGB Capital, he and his wife focus on community development, supporting ventures led by female entrepreneurs. Don's visionary leadership continues to inspire future generations in technology. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Mr. Don Matrick. I'm now pleased to welcome William McCarthy of Burnaby to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia. William McCarthy, guided by his grandfather's principles of hard work, live well, give back, is a leading philanthropist in BC. Leveraging his real estate expertise, William has made transformative contributions to community and healthcare initiatives, especially in Burnaby. His historic $21.4 million Jamber McCarthy legacy was the single largest beneficiary bequest in BC's history. It's revolutionized cancer research and patient care. In honor of his impact, the BC Cancer Burnaby McCarthy Center is named after him. William also chaired a $60 million campaign for Burnaby Hospital's redevelopment and supported First Nations arts and reconciliation. His $5 million gift to establish the BC Cancer Burnaby McCarthy Centre and ongoing community initiatives underscore his unwavering dedication to improving lives and strengthening local communities here in BC. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, William McCarthy. To receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia, I call upon Colin James of North Vancouver. <laughs> Colin Munn, known professionally as Colin James, is a revered Canadian musician celebrated for his guitar mastery and dynamic performances. I've probably seen you about 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> Since his debut with the record-breaking 1988 album, Colin has released 20 studio albums, many achieving gold and platinum status, and scored numerous hits, including the 1990 Billboard chart topper, Just Came Back. His impressive accolades include eight Juno Awards and 31 Maple Blues Awards, and he was inducted into both the Canadian Music Industry Hall of Fame and the BC Entertainment Hall of Fame. Mentored by Stevie Ray Vaughan, Colin's collaborations with music legends and his chart-topping albums like Blue Highways and Miles to Go reflect his ongoing influence. Beyond music, Colin actively supports his community through charity work, including aid for Kelowna wildfire victims and Alzheimer's research. 
His excellence and generosity continue to enrich BC's culture and social fabric. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Mr. Colin James. Next, I'm delighted to call upon Emont Remich of Coldstream to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia. Emont has profoundly enriched BC's cultural landscape as a classical composer, conductor, teacher, and mentor, earning top honors from Latvia to Canada. With a Bachelor of Music from the University of Toronto and Advanced Studies in Salzburg, UBC, and the University of Victoria, Emont founded and conducted notable music groups, including the precursor to the Prince George Symphony, the Aura Chamber Choir, the Youth Symphony of the Okanagan, and the Nova Children's Choir. His compositions have graced prestigious venues like Carnegie Hall. Since 1977, he's inspired young musicians as a violin teacher at Vernon Community Music School and mentored Okanagan young composers. His accolades include the Order of Canada, Latvia's Order of the Three Stars, and various BC Arts Council and Canadian National Choral Awards. Imant's work as a BC Parks naturalist further highlights his commitment to both culture and nature. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Imant Remich. To receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia, we now call upon Ilana Rosenfeld of Invermere. A very large fan base. Well done. Ilana Rosenfeld's visionary leadership transformed Kicking Horse Coffee, yes, yes, into Canada's largest organic coffee company after co-founding the company in Invermere, BC, 32 years ago. Ilana has served as CEO from 1996 to 2023, expanding it into a major North American brand. Her dedication to sustainability and community has driven economic growth and job creation in BC's interior. As a pioneer in social enterprise, she embraced fair trade and organic certifications, championed gender diversity, and led the Nature Conservancy of Canada as chair from 2019 to 2021, advancing conservation and inclusion. Ilana's philanthropy includes millions in donations to conservation causes, earning her accolades like BC Business Entrepreneur of the Year and recognition for Kicking Horse Coffee as the best place to work in Canada. Her career embodies resilience, innovation, and a deep commitment to ethical leadership and community impact. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Ilana Rosenfeld. I'd now like to welcome Gary Siegel of Vancouver to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia. Gary Siegel is a Vancouver native and renowned for his transformative philanthropy that spans local and global communities. As capital campaign chair for Ronald McDonald House in 
uh, BC and Yukon. He helped raise $32 million for a new facility at BC Children's Hospital, significantly expanding support for over 2,000 families annually. Gary also founded the Bring Back Hope Initiative, inspired by his experiences in Ethiopia, to provide life-saving surgeries for disadvantaged children. His contributions have earned him prestigious honours, including the Order of Canada and the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal. At UBC, Gary's support for the Faculty of Medicine and the development of the Master of Global Surgical Care program has driven innovation in healthcare. As chair of the VGH and UBC Hospital Foundation, his leadership continues to enhance health care and quality of life worldwide. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Gary Siegel. I'm now delighted to call upon Catherine Ulrich of Prince George to receive the insignia for the Order of British Columbia. Catherine Ulrich retired in 2023 after a distinguished 41-year career in healthcare, including 16 years as President and CEO of Northern Health. Her leadership was transformative, improving access to care in rural and remote areas across a region the size of France. Beginning as a nurse in Alberta, Manitoba, and Northern BC, Catherine rose through the ranks to lead Northern Health, becoming BC's longest serving Health Authority CEO. Under her guidance, Northern Health introduced groundbreaking programs like the Rural Nursing Certificate and innovative care models. Catherine also influenced national health care planning through partnerships with organizations like Healthcare Excellence Canada and collaborated with Indigenous communities to enhance cultural safety. Her legacy of Empathetic, respectful, and innovative leadership continues to set a high standard of health care. Your Honour, Deputy Premier, I present for the Order of British Columbia, Kathy Ulrich. an outstanding 2024 cohort of OBC recipients. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me once again in congratulating all of the recipients of the Order of British Columbia. Bravo. task, I'm sure, for the selection committee. I'd now like to call upon Her Honour, uh, the Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia, to deliver her remarks this afternoon, Your Honour. Thanks, Jeremy. And oh my God, wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> what an amazing group of good people and good citizens we honour today. So congratulations again to everybody. Um, it is certainly my enormous privilege to welcome all of you here to Government House, along with my co-host, uh, Deputy Premier Mike Farnworth, um, also Solicitor General, as we all know, and a fellow bird-watching enthusiast. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's a pleasure to work with you today, as always. Um, and how wonderful for us to work together to celebrate the investiture of these 10 remarkable British Columbias. As always, um, as I always do, as we do here at Government House, uh, take a moment uh, to acknowledge the Lekwungen peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt, upon whose traditional territory we gather today, and to thank them for sharing these lands in peace and friendship. Which is good day, friends. It's great to be with you today, and uh, it, it really, it really, truly is. I also want to express my thanks to Chief Thomas and Elder Butch Dick uh, for the gift of a traditional blessing. I'm going to take just a brief moment to comment on the practice of land acknowledgement because I'm very proud that it's being adopted broadly across British Columbia and indeed across the country. But it's important that it be more than just a pro forma statement. And so I try to take it as an opportunity to reflect on the um, legacy of colonialism, the harms of the past, and what I can do in my role as Lieutenant Governor and in my personal life to contribute to the healing that is needed in Canada. So I will share with you that I myself am a seventh generation Canadian. My ancestors came to Cape Breton, Nova Scotia during the Scottish clearances when their lands were taken away by the aristocracy. And they found a great deal of success and happiness here in Canada um, that I have subsequently benefited from. But I'm also conscious that it has come at the expense of Indigenous peoples. And so for that reason, I feel a deep responsibility to be a visible and a vocal advocate for reconciliation in, on it, in all its dimensions. Certainly it's true that over the past few years, Canadians have finally been awakened, awakened in our hearts to the truth of the appalling historic treatment of Indigenous peoples who continued to work, to raise families, and to valiantly carry on their traditions despite the seizure of their lands, the apprehension of their children, and the culture of exclusion and abject disregard practiced upon them. The work of redressing the balance lies ahead and has much to do with ameliorating economic, social, health, and environmental conditions. And as I said, I do feel deeply my responsibility to be a voice in support of all of that. Also want to express appreciation to the Honorable Leonard Marchand, Chief Justice of British Columbia and Chair of our Advisory Council, and of course the Honorable Raj Chuhan, our Speaker, and all the members of the Order of BC Advisory Council. You've done us proud today. I've done this job before myself, and it is inspiring. Thanks are also due to Inspector Grant Hamilton from the Victoria Police Department and Mr. Nathan Sangara, who is a um, retired corrections officer, a beloved member of our own security team here, also our government house philosopher, and these two have uh, joined, uh, joined me today as my honorary aides de camp, and as you can see, they keep us very much in order. So today we celebrate truly the very best of British Columbia, the contributions of our recipients today have come in many forms, but I think that they are all characterized by a shared um, aspiration to unite people, to unite people in the creation of a more prosperous, more peaceful, more just, and more inclusive world. And also, I believe, by an abiding belief in the potential of Canada to contribute to that better world. In hearing the citations, one cannot but be struck by the remarkable diversity of the contributions we honor today. You've helped us to grow as a province, building leading enterprises in business, technology, social enterprise, attracting billions to the BC economy, and contributing philanthropically to share the benefits of economic prosperity more equally. You've entertained us, enriched our lives with music, art, and film, You've built major cultural institutions and explored connections across cultures, sharing the benefits of your own good fortune to improve the lives of others. You've transformed food production and agriculture. You've taught us to care for our natural environment and educated us on the importance of protecting the province's biodiversity. We're humbled by the compassion and humanity of those who care for our health and have taught us to become a more caring and inclusive society. We honor the steadfast purpose of scientists and health leaders who've pioneered innovations in biotechnology, drug research, 
fostered collaboration across government and industry, and championed a vision for health, for the health of all humanity that has saved countless lives. Our ability, let me go back, I missed a page. <laughs> I'll say, I'll keep it brief. We're, we're, we're really most fortunate to call home this province of unparalleled beauty, um, diverse cultures and abundant resources and opportunity. But in this era of increasing polarization, incendiary rhetoric and declining trust, we're reminded, I'd say most forcefully, of the fragility of democracy in countries around the world, where sadly we see that even the most seemingly stable of, of societies can be subject to authoritarian capture. Our ability to uphold our democracy and to meet our local and our global challenges depends to a large degree on the leadership of exemplary citizens like you. And so I wanna thank you for demonstrating that we can be more than individuals engaged in our own pursuits, but citizens who share responsibility for each other, for the planet, and will act accordingly. I thank you for your active participation in civil society and the institutions of democracy that build trust and authentic engagement despite all that surrounds us and all that would divide us. What gives me hope is the respect that exists among diverse members of our own communities, respect that is manifest in this room today among the friendships that bind us in our common humanity and unite us in a hope for the future where understanding and dialogue can lead the way towards that better world we all envision and desire. For surely it is time to seek a better way forward in this increasingly fractious world, and that way will surely be through caring and sharing, through learning from each other and really, really listening. It will be through the humility and empathy that enable us to see beyond the confines of our own experience and opinions, to find those places of compromise in between the extremes of public opinion. By your example, you show us that the future is not something we passively enter, it is something we create. That each one of us has power and agency and opportunity to contribute to the creation of that better world. And so I thank you for all that you have given and for your abiding commitment to all the work that lies ahead. Congratulations to all. Haichka CM, merci, and enjoy the afternoon. Thank you very much, Your Honour. I'm now delighted to call upon the Honourable Mike Farnworth, Deputy Premier of British Columbia, to provide his remarks, sir. Thanks. When I was first elected, I didn't need these. <laughs> that was 1991. <laughs> Times have changed. Um, thank you, uh, Your Honour. Um, I'm pleased and welcome everyone. I'm really pleased uh, this afternoon to be joining you on the territory of the Lekwungen peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. And I want to thank Elder Butch Dick of the, the Songhees Nation for the blessing and Chief Jerome Thomas of the Esquimalt Nation for those welcoming words. And thank you for getting us started in a good way. And I also want to say thank you as well to Stephanie Greaves uh, for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem. And I know that shortly she'll be leading us in the, uh, the Royal Anthem. Your Honor, thank you once again for inviting us all to Government House. You make this stately manor a warm and welcoming place. And I can think of no grander venue to hold today's celebratory uh, ce ceremony. Um, as most of you know, Premier Eby has had a very wild and busy week. Uh, now, I was talking to him this morning, Apparently, his 10-year-old and his 5-year-old have teamed up against the newborn so they don't split the older sibling vote. <laughs> I'm so honored to be here uh, to join in celebrating my fellow British Columbians because you've all achieved great success in your fields. 
in the arts and technology, in medicine and music, in education and conservation, in farming and philanthropy as leaders. And at least one of you is here because of something called the voodoo thing. <laughs> as great as your many achievements are, today is about something more. Many people achieve, but not everyone contributes. This event is about honoring your contributions to making British Columbia the wonderful and amazing place that it is. You are all shining examples of the, column, of the, of the common values uniting British Columbians. You share a commitment to not only improving our province, but improving the world. So today we honor and recognize you for the inspirational work that you've done to make our province a better place. Through healing, through bridging cultures, through conservation, and so much more. I want to thank you for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do to make better the lives of British Columbians and others. On behalf of the people of British Columbia, I want to congratulate you on this outstanding honor and offer a thank you to your friends and family who've supported you over the years. You've helped make British Columbia one of the envies of the world. That is your lasting legacy. It is something that you and your families should all be proud of. I can think of no greater achievement. And so on behalf of the government of British Columbia, the people of our province, thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you'll continue to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Premier. Uh, now I'd like to call upon our recipient speaker today, Kathy Ulrich, to provide remarks on behalf of the newly inducted members of the Order. Kathy. Good afternoon, Your Honour, Deputy Premier. Chief Jerome Thomas and Ray Harris and Elder Butch Dick, thank you for starting us in the way that you did this afternoon. Chief Justice and members of the Advisory uh, Council, nominators, family, friends and colleagues. It's an absolute privilege for all of us to be here this afternoon on this 35th anniversary, anniversary investiture ceremony as it takes place on the traditional territories of the Lagoncan speaking people, the Esquimalt and Sanji's First Nation. It's my honor to be speaking on behalf of this very impressive group of people who each are contributing to their communities, to our province and beyond through sustainable agriculture, life sciences, indigenous rights and cultural harmony, healthcare, technology, philanthropy, music, education, ethical business, and conservation. As you've heard this afternoon, the work that these leaders have individually and collectively taken has impacted and influenced the very nature, nature of our civil society in our province. And I know standing alongside each of these leaders are an equally impressive team of people who are committed to working together to make our world a better place as well as supportive families and friends who have made our chosen life work possible and doable. Some of those colleagues, friends and family are with us today, both online and in person. And the credit for all that is represented here today also belongs to each of you. Without you, the results of our work would not and could not have been realized. So our sincere thank you for today and all that has come before. I'm getting a bit emotional. <laughs> Specifically, I would like to thank you, I thank um, those of you who also put the hours into the nomination process, um, and to those on the advisory council who undertook the review and selection process. Very much um, appreciated. We are very privileged to live in Canada, in British Columbia, and in our various communities. And with this privilege comes the responsibility to serve and to be of service. The group before you today have lived lives of service in their respective fields 
And as we receive this Order of BC, we are committing to the lifelong responsibility to continue to serve in our communities and in our province and to strive together with all of you to enable our communities and our province to be second to none. And that is indeed a privilege. So on behalf of the 2024 Order of BC recipients, thank you for this remarkable honour. Thank you very much for those beautiful words on behalf of today's uh, recipients. Uh, we're, we're really, really appreciative of everyone's presence here today as we gather to honour these exceptional British Columbians. Thanks to the folks at home for tuning in. I'd also like to acknowledge many of the past recipients that are here today. I think your coming uh, here is very important and uh, creates a real uh, exceptional community. So thank you for those that have made the trip here. Now, will you please rise to sing God Save the King and to remain standing as the official party and recipients in the advisory council leave the ballroom right after we're finished singing. Thanks again, Stephanie. That was amazing. And thanks to all of you. Uh, we hope that you stay and enjoy the reception. We've got the bar at the back, desserts out front, food being circulated. Enjoy, and thank you again for coming. Thank you. 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 